Bro, what's up, YouTube? I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to continue con la historia verdadera de México Profundo. We're going to take off from the last place, which I believe is chapter 13. Um, This is going to be a long one. It took me a lot longer to get all the notes ready for you guys. There was so much detail. Um, So if you guys don't like long videos, this is going to be a long one. Watch it in increments. You know, maybe 10 minutes a day, 5 minutes a day, or don't watch it at all. However you decide to watch this, this content, it's up to you. Um, but yes, it's going to be a long one. So let's get started. So here, we're going to start with chapter 14, and that goes into the topic of the Mexica. So let's get to it. So it says here, the most sought out and studied culture by the invaders has been the Mexica. The colonizers had to exaggerate on the atrocities and on the military power. These false versions of history is only to enhance the colonizer's image on their uh, on their win. As we should know, all this is a lie, as the war was not with the colonizers, but with the indigenous tribes, which provoked and guided by the Spanish. So yes, the war, as I think I mentioned this in another video, was not with the Spaniards. It was with the indigenous people. The Spaniards gathered a lot of the tribes that didn't like the Mexica or were against some of the practices and convinced them to go against them. And that's what they did. So the war really wasn't fought by the Spanish. It was fought by the indigenous people of Anahuac. The Spanish took advantage of the prophecy of the Mexica. This prophecy was the return of Quetzalcoatl. So yes, the Mexica were waiting for the return of Quetzalcoatl. And this, this version of this return was a man that was light fair skin with a beard. And when Cortez met Malinche, and Malinche is not her real name. That's just a, gay, a name that was given to her. Malinche told him that the Aztecs were waiting for Quetzalcoatl. And she described every aspect that he was resembled. So Cortez took advantage of that and introduced himself as Quetzalcoatl. Not only was the prophecy used against the Mexica, but also the chickenpox. Soon after the missionaries arrived to investigate the customs and traditions, they only wanted to eradicate the knowledge. The few who tried honestly to learn faced a language barrier. So a lot of the so-called investigators, majority of them, I'm not going to say all of them, there was obviously good, but majority of them were not. They were just in it to get rid of everything that had to do with the indigenous philosophy, religion, and culture. And there's a there's a reason for that. You get rid of someone's philosophy, their religion, and their culture, you strip away all of their identity. Okay, so that was the objective. And obviously they had a hard time because of the language barrier. So to a degree, the language barrier saved a lot of the what we have now as far as indigenous wisdom, indigenous uh, philosophy. One thing was for certain, the philosophy, religion, and science were a lot more advanced than these of Europe. So moving on. So different topic, a tribe with no face. When the Mexica and Aztec arrived in Anahuac, existing tribes were existing. So before I move on, <clears throat> one thing to consider is that the Mexica and the Aztecs are the same people. I know there's other YouTube videos that claim that the Aztecs and the Mexica are different. They're not. It's just a different name. That's all it is. They're the same people. The Mexica came from the north and came as hunter-gatherers. When the Mexica arrived to the Valley of Mexico, they did not know how to speak Nahuatl, grow corn, sow cotton, or in one word, they were viewed as savages. So this is something that caught me by surprise because I myself, I'm guilty of using the term, the ancient language of the Aztecs, Nahuatl. But Nahuatl is not Aztec. It's a lot older than the Aztecs. A lot of the things that we call Aztec, like the Aztec calendar, uh, Quetzalcoatl, symbols as, as we all know as the Aztec G-Shield, are not Aztec. They're older than the Aztecs. The Aztecs applied it from what was existing in Anahuac. After migrating for a long time, and with the troubles that no one liked them, but feared them, they set home in a lake around the year 1325. Only 194 years before the arrival of the Europeans, 
and the destruction of Tenochtitlan. So this is one of the things why I understand why this book is not against Mexica, but it's not pro-Mexica either. Because a lot of our history, Mexican history, not the Criollos, not the Spanish, not the Japanese people, not the Chinese people that live in Mexico, the real mestizos, the indigenous people of Mexico. Why our history... The, one of the reasons why they're bought, these people are bothered why they, about the history is that they only focus on the Aztecs. The Aztecs were only in an hour for 194 years. The tribes before the Aztecs were there for over 3,000 years. And we don't really think about them, from what I'm understanding. A mythological history exists where the Mexica, Mexicas migrated from a mystical place called the Seven Caves and came... Or migrated in search of the promised land, guided by the Messiah born out of a virgin mother. The sign was to find an eagle eating a serpent on top of a cactus. So this whole concept of the Messiah. There's going to be a lot of resemblance as I move on you know, to Christianity. And, and, and you can connect the dots as you please. But everything's going to make sense with this whole concept of the Messiah. Where do they get it from? Everything's going to make sense. It is important to remember that Tracaelel sent out an order to destroy the codexes and sent out another order to rewrite history. This part is the deal breaker. When Tracaelel sent out orders to destroy the codexes from the, from the um, Toltecas, and then he sent another order to rewrite history. Everything will make sense. It is important to know that like the Mexica, Aztec, other tribes before them also claim a mythological origin coming from a place of seven tribes. They also claim that their, guided, that they, that their guide was a human being born out of a virgin mother. And that this human being would also take them to the promised land. So here, if we understand this, pay attention. The tribes before the Aztecs also claim that they were guided by a, by a human being born out of a virgin mother and who would be guided to the promised land. Tlacaelel sent an order to go destroy the codexes from those previous tribes that already believed that. And he rewrote history in his favor. So one of the things here is that they believe that the Mexica copied and rewrote their history according to the tribes prior to them to appear as a supreme uh, chosen race. One important point to understand is that the attitude of some of the missionaries was to try and find in Quetzalcoatl, St. Thomas, along with trying to find in the Anahuac civilization descendants of Israel. So that has been a battle. I know I've gotten a lot of uh, uh, a few. I'm not gonna say a lot. A few uh, emails regarding, you know, the Aztecs being one of the lost tribes of Israel. It seems from this here that the Spaniards were heavily trying to find. It's not so much that the Mexica resembled one of the lost tribes of Israel. It's more that the Spanish wanted to find any way to connect them to it. That's what I'm understanding from this. So I'm going to leave this as that because I don't have much knowledge regarding this. But I have a book that I'm going to read after this one regarding the lost, uh, how the Aztecs, according to a Spaniard, about uh, how they connect to the one of the lost tribes of Israel. So I'll get to that. But for now... Just keep that in mind. So moving on. Another important aspect to know is that when the Criollos, Criollos are uh, the, the sons of uh, Spaniards born in Mexico. In the 18th century, we took the history of the ancient Mexico and made it their own. So yes, the Criollos, which are not Mexicans, they're just, they have nationality. I know a lot of people have a hard time understanding that just because you're born in anywhere, if you're not of that race, you only have nationality. There is such thing as race. And I, and, and I always hear this, this, uh, 
this comment, oh, we're the human race. Only people who, I believe, this is my personal opinion, only people who are ashamed of who they are claim that. Oh, it's a human race. No, it's not just a, yeah, we are a human, but we are different. It's been like that since the beginning of time. We are different. And it is important that we acknowledge who we are and that we are productive. We are productive members to the world, not just to society and to our country, to the world. Okay? Just wanted to put that out there. A lot of the so-called achievements of the Aztecs were born in the mythology and origin that the, that the Criollos from the 18th century fabricated. So according to him, a lot of the so-called achievements... And splendor that the Aztecs or the Mexica, uh, the Aztecs or Mexica uh, got were really just out of the imagination of the Criollos. Excuse me, I gotta plug this in. Out of the imagination of the Criollos. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe not everything that we've been taught about the Aztecs is factual. So something to keep in mind. I'm not saying it's true. Just be open to the idea. That certain things might have been fabricated. So we move into a different topic. The ideology. Tlacaelel was the governor in the Aztec Empire. In which he removed a lot of the laws and teachings of Quetzalcoatl. He removed the spiritual out of life. And he gave it a materialistic perspective. It is known that Moctezuma and Tlacaelel attended the Cal Calmecac. <clears throat> in which the remaining knowledge of the Tolteca existed in Anahuac. Tracaeler was the one responsible for the philosophical, religious, and economic and political change in which they self-proclaimed owners of Sam Anahuac. So yes, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. Tracaeler gave out orders to go retrieve this information. Now, what it's mentioning here is that Tlacalel, along with Moctezuma, went to where this information was kept, read it, and then destroyed it, and then decided to rewrite their history according to what they had learned. So that's something to keep in mind. To Tlacalel, he found it necessary to forge what he would call today historical, historical conscience in which the Aztecs could feel proud. For this, Tlacaelet round up the, the elders of the Mexica and all in agreement determined to burn the ancient codexes, books, and paintings. So yes, in order for the Aztecs to rewrite their history, they, ha they had to get rid of the existing history of Anahuac. And that's exactly what they did according to the literature. They got rid of the history of the Toltecas but they learned it before they destroyed it and they rewrote their history according to what they had learned to appear as a superior race, as a chosen people. Now, I'm not going to say with none of this because every there's a bunch of versions that this is factual. But I am going to say this to keep a very open mind to this. So moving on. So the, philosoph uh, the philosophical and religious reforms. The Mexica guided by Tlacaelel destroyed the most important codexes in an attempt to erase the history and philosophy of the Toltecas. The real problem of the Mexicas is this, the colonization of the Spanish and everything else that came with it is due to the absence of the Toltecas and their wisdom along with the philosophical and the ideological changes made by the Mexica in which the Spanish later claimed. So, According to him, the real issue behind the colonization is not so much on the Spanish. It's in the destruction of the wisdom of the Toltecas that left the people orphans to the true origins, to the true wisdom, to the philosophy. So by the Aztecs destroying all this information, all of this knowledge, people were left in limbo. And to him, that was the precursor to why the colonization took place. The Mexica, guided by the Tlacaelel, initiated the new era in the cultural lives of the tribes that had thousands of years of living in the valley of Anahuac. So the Mexica became like, you can say, the uh, the governing body of Anahuac. You had immigrants, 
They knew there was some uh, wisdom that existed. They went out to find it. They read it, destroyed it. They rewrote their history to appear as the chosen people. And then they became the governing bodies for all of those civilizations that existed prior to that. The new ideology changed the ideology of, uh, or dogma of the spirit for that of the materialism. Because yes, you got to understand, this is important. The tribes prior to the Meshik or the Aztecs were very spiritual. The Aztecs are very materialistic. So you got to understand that. They believe that the sacrifice of the, of the heart was no longer symbolic, but that it had to be done physically, a living, beating heart. So this right here claims that the Aztecs did do human sacrifice, okay? I've read other literature where it claims that they didn't, that it was all symbolic. So you have two versions of history. Um, at the end of the day, it's really up to you what you decide to run with. I'm open to both. I'm not going to discredit either. I'm open to both, and I'm going to stay like that. With this, uh, with this beating heart, they would offer it to the fifth son, which was threatening their existence. The changes that, that Tlacaelel made gave the Aztecs its power, but these same changes at the arrival of the Spanish was their downfall. Tlacaelel removed Quetzalcoatl and in its place put Huitzilopochtli, the god of war, excuse me, and materialism. Changed the spiritual sacrifice for that of the physical one. So moving on. With the change from the spiritual to the materialistic, the Aztecs gained power, but at the same time, their downfall. When the Spanish learned that the Mexica prophecy was on the return of Quetzalcoatl, Hernán Cortés took advantage and self-proclaimed himself Quetzalcoatl. It goes back to what I mentioned earlier in, in, in the beginning of this video, how Cortés was informed by Malinche and he just took advantage of it. The mistakes made by the Aztecs and the tribes who joined the Spanish were paid at a high price. The Aztecs for being transgressors and imperialists and the sur surrounding tribes who fought with the Spanish against the Mexica because once the war was over, they realized that they were not sent by Quetzalcoatl and they turned out to be more exploiters than, than the Mexica. So once... I believe, according to what it's saying, is that the other tribes surrounding the, the Aztecs bought into the idea that Quenan Cortes was the return of Quetzalcoatl. So they joined forces with them. Once the Mexica were dealt with, they realized this guy is not the return of Quetzalcoatl. Pretty much we made a mistake. That's what it said. I'm taking from this. The famous Aztec Empire did not last more than 196 years. The main, uh, the main representative culture is the Toltecas and the center of such development would be Totihuacan. So according to him, the, the, the place that the Aztecs hold right now in this current time of Mexico, it shouldn't be the Aztecs, it should be the Toltecas. And the city that should have, I guess, the, the, the glory... In Mexico, it shouldn't be Tenochtitlan. It should be Totihuacan, the city of the gods. So moving on. The Mexica arrived to the Valley of Anahuac in the time of its downfall. When the Tolteca teachers had years of having disappeared and Totihuacan was covered in dirt. The famous Aztec Empire only had 81 years of power. So yes, when the Mexica arrived to Anahuac, uh, the Toltecas had disappeared. They covered everything with dirt. So, according to him, that, that played an important part as to why it was so easy for the Mexica to do what they did with all that wisdom and knowledge. So now we're moving on to a different topic. The divine mission. The Mexica self-proclaimed the people of the sun. They self-assigned the divine mission in order to maintain and conquer the land surrounded by water. The changes made on the orders of Tlacaelel changed the spirit of the religion and of society and gave it a materialistic me meaning instead. Tlacaelel used some of the Tolteca concepts but made changes 
to most. School stopped having a mystic ch character and spiritual and became more warrior-like and materialistic. The flower battle, a spiritual battle for the Tolteca, moved on to be a battle to take prisoners to take a sacrifice to feed the fifth son. So now we go back to the concept of human sacrifice. And he's very strong about it as to it, it did exist, it is real. So that's something that this literature is claiming, but other literature claims that it never existed. So I'll leave that up to you once again. The duality of Quetzalcoatl, Tlaloc, moved on to be Tlaloc and Huitzilopochtli. The flower battle was not only to obtain blood to feed the fifth son, but to obtain material and goods to continue to building of the Nochitlan. So one thing about the fl flower battle that I mentioned in one of my videos is that ever it, it was a it was that battle started when the Mexica would play the that sport where they hit the ball with the hip, which wasn't a sport. It was a way to foretell the future, and when the, that ball represented the sun, and every player represented a god. And wherever that ball would go, they were it would be able to foretell the future. How? I don't know. But in that game, they foretold that someone was going to come and bring destruction. So this is where the whole concept of the flower battle started in preparation for when that person arrived, they were prepared for battle. But here, it's a different recollection, a different uh, interpretation. Through the process, Tenochtitlan was able to build... Magnificent architecture, all in a short period of time. Commerce became big in Anahuac. So here we go into a different subject, the Pochtecas and the Warriors. Due to the modifications that the Mexica had created to the Toltec tol tol knowledge, the Anahuac spiritual tradition started to suffer severe transformations like war, commerce, the coin, and private property. It is important to know that the weapons and war for the Anahuac civilization had nothing to do with the European concept. War was an activity to take prisoners to the feet of the fifth son. The objective of war in the post-classic time period was not to kill or destroy. A lot of wars were ar arranged. Some battles were done only to keep the warriors in shape and take prisoners. So moving on. The phase of the Mexica. The Criollos, Spaniards born in Mexico, have controlled the phase of the Mexica and have claimed them as their ancestors. So yes, that's very true. The Spaniards born in Mexico, once again, are not Mexicans. They're Spaniards. And, that, and I feel like it's time that we start calling people for what they are and not for where they're born. They are Spaniards, not Mexicans. Mexicans are mestizos. And if indigenous people decide to use that name... To identify themselves, that's fine, because it's still an indigenous word. A lot of the lies have been written about the Mexica. Lies like lies like powerful savages, idolaters, to the extent that they would swim in rivers of blood. And with the with the common idea that they would sacrifice thousands and thousands of people. Another lie is is in the history of portraying them as the owners and creators of all of Anahuac. Inventors of the calendar. Um, um, the tongue, the architecture, engineering, along with the religion and many other things. One thing to know and understand is that who invented the myth of the Aztec Empire was the colonizers. So apparently, according to him, there was no such thing as an Aztec Empire. That was a lie created by the, by the colonizers. For as long as the history about the Aztecs remains in control of the colonizers, it will be difficult to fully know and understand the true history. Learning the truth will allow us to initiate the road to rewriting our history and also to end with the colonization. So yes... It is vital. It is, and this is why I went after these books, because it's very important that we understand the indigenous perspective of our history. What do they have to say? Not just the, the Criollos, not the Spanish. Obviously, they're going to write history to benefit them. 
it is important that we start listening to indigenous people. We have a question. We have a habit of saying, oh, I'm going to go to a scholar. I'm going to go to someone that has a degree. No, go to, go to an indigenous person. A piece of paper does not determine how much you know. You can learn anything. You just won't be validated by a, by a board, which is just a group of people. So something to keep in mind. So moving on. So now we move to chapter 15. It's here, the conquest. So far, we're doing good on time, so let's keep going. The history of the, of the discovery of America, its violent conquest, and, and its unjust colonization during the past five centuries has been in the hands of the victors and of the children of all of the Europeans that have continued to arrive to Mexico to make a fortune at the expense of the natives and also due to its abundant natural resources. I've been saying this. The people who have been running Mexico has never been a Mexicano. Until now, uh, 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 Mr. Lopez from Mexico, the president, the current president, he has done, and I know most people are against him, but I will say this in his defense. He has done more for Mexico than anybody in the last 500 years that I can recollect. He has done more for the indigenous people and more for the, for the people than anybody else. I got to say, for as long as people who are not mestizos or indigenous run Mexico, the Mexican people will continue to suffer. Mestizos and indigenous people need to be the only ones to run for elections to run Mexico. Nobody else should. That's just my personal opinion. In the past, they wanted gold. Now they want oil and cheap labor. Knowing and understanding our true history liberates the people from re repeating the, the insane mistakes. It, it is important that all Mexicans know their history. This will enable for the end of colonization and the colonization among our own people to our people. So yes, the number one enemy of a Mexican is another Mexican or a Mexican that thinks he's not Mexican because he was born in Africa. He was born in Japan. He was born in China. He was born in the United States. Well, I'm not Mexican. I was born in China, so I'm Chinese. No, you're not Chinese, dude. You're Mexican with Chinese nationality. Okay, no, you're not African. You're Mexican with, Me with African nationality, okay? We need to cut that out and, and, and if you choose to. If you want to remain colonized and be at the service of the colonizers, you go right and you do that. But for the raza who wants to decolonize, it is important that we learn our history, our true history, not what we're being told. We got to stop allowing people to tell us who we are. Oh, you're Hispanic. You're Latino. I'm not Hispanic and I'm not Latino. I'm Mexican of North America. You're Mexican of Central America. Or you're Mexican of South America, or whatever. But I'm Mexican. I'm not a Hispanic. I'm not a Latino. Spanish is the language forced on our people, but it's not our native tongue. Something to understand. The Filipinas do such a great job about that. They want nothing to do with the Spaniards. So they're not called Hispanics. Mexicans worry about other Mexicans not speaking Spanish. Honestly, my perspective in that changed. I don't longer care if Mexicans speak Spanish or not. Learn now. Learn the indigenous language, not Spanish. Learn the indigenous language. Choose one and learn it. Choose a dialect. It don't matter. Whichever one inspires you, learn it. So moving on. The world of the colonizers. Spain came from the expulsion of the Arabs who had dominated the peninsula for 800 years. As soon as the discovery of Semanawak, North America, and of Tijuantansuyu, uh, South America, the Spanish com uh, commands with invasion, destruction, and exploitation, and the destruction of the towns with the uh, divine permission of the Catholic Church and the royal support from the Spanish crown. So I mentioned in another video how the Catholic Church has, according to the literature, has was behind what happened in Mexico, in Semanawa. The Catholic Church was behind it. As I don't know more about that than this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do some homework on that. I'm going to go deep in that. And then I'll drop a video about that only.
But for now, we have the mental thought that the Catholic Church was behind the Spanish colonization in Mexico. Now we move on to a different topic. The reason for the discovery. The discovery of the New World in 1492 marks the start of the search for power of the merchants. The invasion of America, Africa, and Asia by the European uh, crowns were generally funded by merchants. Although the Spanish colonizers had the emblems of the Spanish crown, they were fully funded by the merchants. This was one of the reasons why the Spanish crown did not have control of the colonizers, as they were not soldiers or people of status. Instead, these men without education, but with a hunger for wealth at the expense of others and the exploitation, were financed and used by the merchants in order to initiate the world takeover. So that uh, these people, according to from what I'm understanding, and please, this is from my understanding. The Spaniards that were in Mexico were out just seeking wealth. They were just common people who were just greedy and who had no education, were funded by merchants to go out, pretty much go out and take over the world and, and create a uh, and create wealth. That's really what they wanted all along. And it, and it makes sense because when Hernan Cortes was given gold, when he was tested by the Mexica, and, the, and then after he, he started asking for more gold, the Mexica knew that he wasn't he wasn't Quetzalcoatl. It makes perfect sense that his only objective was gold. That's all he cared about. The European invasion was not generated by a spirit of good. It was also not approved military of the Spanish crown. The discovery of the new world was funded by merchants and promoted by investors and wealthy merchants who seek to first find a new route, new route to Asia, and then take everything from the new and discovered lands. The official Hispanic history, Hispanic history, we're not Hispanic. Look, the official Hispanic history, meaning the Spaniard version, Mexicans are not Spanish, just because Spaniards, there's a lot of them in Mexico, doesn't make them Mexican. Okay, we need to, we need to decolonize ourselves of that mental thought the official hispanic history of this has presented these historical facts as good when in truth they had been nothing but lies the whole truth about the uh, embarkment of the discovery of the new world was not to promote christianity but to become rich at the expense of everything else so christianity was just a front that's all it was it, according to the literature it was just a front it wasn't about Christ, it was about we're gonna use this, promote this, and then at the our real motive is the gold. The people who embarked in the adventure with Cristobal Colon were the poorest people who viewed this trip as the only way to get out of their hardships. So here it goes from it goes from Cortez to Cristobal Colon. So just kind of bear with me. He kind of does it's not very clear about the transition, but just kind of bear with me. The Spanish who left to the Americas were the field workers with land, without land, merchants, and the lowest of the class who only seek a way for quick wealth. The Hispanic version of history tells us that a group of brave soldiers and or explorers that came to discover a, a primitive world and, sa and savage all in the name of progress and Christianity. The hidden truth is tells us the opposite. So yes, it was never about Christianity. It was about gold, wealth, power. That's really what it was about. So now we're going to a different subject, the philosophy of the conquest. The Spanish created a philosophy that would justify and legalize the invasion, destruction, submission, and exploitation of the indigenous people. Legitimizing the injustice, the atrocities, the genocide, was the objective of the religious, nobles, merchants, etc. Before I move on, I know that when people watch my content and some of the comments that I received is, man, we gotta unite, we gotta, you know, love one another. 
And I'm and I'm gonna respond with this. That's fine. But the truth is the truth. Understanding our truth, our history, it's gonna hurt because it's not pleasant. Everything that we've been taught is not correct for us. Okay? Once again, this country, the United States of America, does not have an obligation to teach you your history. That's not their obligation. If you come as an as a, 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 a from an immigrant family, you're gonna learn their customs. You're gonna learn their version of history. Our job is to go out and seek our version of history. That's our job. No one's gonna do it for you. And the truth hurts because it's not pleasant. And a lot of people side more with the Spaniards because they're ashamed of the indigenous. And that's perfectly fine. But in this channel, we side with the indigenous and we respect good Spaniards. That's all it is. To generate wealth at the expense of crime was the objective. So number one, the first idea was that the indigenous were not human beings, but animals. Two, that because they were away from a European god and the Catholic faith, they were product of Satan. Number three, that which was appropriate for humanity was the European culture. Anything else is inferior. Number four, that whomever won in battle had the right to keep and enslave all men and men, land and properties. So this was kind of the philosophy of the colonizers. The indigenous people were uh, condemned legally to slavery and to exploitation by means of weapons and with the blessing of God. So apparently God blessed the, the Spaniards to enslave these people. And, and you know it's interesting that they do this because if we go back to the Old Testament, there's a verse, if I'm not mistaken, where God is okay with slavery. I'm gonna get it, I'll get it, I'll get the verses and I'll get into that. But I've been getting into that lately pretty deep. But it doesn't surprise me that these people were enslaved the indigenous people in the name of God. Through the colonizers' philosophy and their self-proclaimed rights. They justify the massacre, mutilation, rape, death, slavery, and the exploitation of the indigenous people. The problem with Mexico is that this continues to repeat. The colonization, excuse me, the colonization of society, the culture, the economy, and politics continues to be the same from the 16th century to now the 21st century. Absolutely, 100%. I've been saying this. The problem with Mexico is not Mexico. It's not that it's not rich. It's the people who run Mexico. The people that Mexicans elect to run Mexico are not Mexicans. Except for this one. Obres, Obres, Lo, Mr. Lopez, the president of Mexico. He is a mestizo. And look how much he has done for Mexico. Much we're disagreeing, that's fine. I think he's done a lot more than anybody else. And that's the problem with most Mexicanos. We're electing people that are not Mexicans. To run Mexico. That's the problem. The official Hispanic history. Once again. The official Hispanic history. Meaning Hispanic meaning from Spain. Prohibits the questioning. of the or, And the critique. It promotes that the people not look. Seek, it, seek history. That will allow them to see. The lies that were written. So the Spaniards don't want. The mestizos and indigenous people. To question critique the history that has been written in books just because something is written in a book including this one it doesn't justify it as facts okay and that's something that mexico and i'm not speaking mexico as in mestizos and indigenous people mexico as in the people who run mexico have done such a great job of keeping the colonized colonized version of our history away from us they don't want us to seek this kind of information out the colonizers found justification by right of the conquest and colonization not only of America but of the whole world. After the 16th century, the Europeans invaded America, Africa, and Asia, destroying cultures and religion, enslaving and exterminating entire towns and all of in favor of their personal economic and political agenda or approved by their religion. Something to keep in mind. The official history has been the Hispanic version since 1520. And I put here in quotation, Hispanic not as Mexican, but as Spaniards. 
when Hernán Cortés himself wrote Las Cartas de Relación, which are a very partial illustration of what took place, which only had the motive to justify Cortés upon the, upon the king of Spain for having betrayed the governor of Cuba. So apparently when Hernán Cortés wrote Las Cartas de Relación, he only wrote them to the, to the king of Spain to justify all the atrocities that he was causing in Anahuac. So obviously he was going to write them in his favor. The Hispanic history till this day puts Hernán Cortés like a hero. And I've seen that. Um, I hear this a lot from my family. You know, they, they, you ask them a question about anything regarding the Spanish and it's, oh yeah, they're good. They brought Christianity. They brought the truth. But then you ask them about the indigenous people. Those are demons. Don't bring them up. You know, even my tattoos, like, why do you have so many, so many demons on his like, that's your colonization speaking for you. And it's sad to see that a lot of our raza is extremely colonized. And the ones who were, who, the ones who are against anything indigenous, and I'm, and I'm going to say this because I've been noticing this, are not Mexicans. They're Spaniards that come from Mexico. Those are the ones who have, want nothing to do with the Mexican, real Mexican culture. They're the ones who are ashamed that they came from Mexico, who say, I'm me of Mexican descent, or I'm not Mexican because I wasn't born. A lot of those people are not Mexicans. Just something to keep in mind. The conquistador. It is important to know and understand that the Spanish crown was behind Cortes going to the shores of Mexico in search of gold. Christianity was the excuse, while gold was the objective. Once again, Christianity was the excuse why gold was the objective. The invasion. Now we go on to a different topic. In this situation, Hernán Cortés arrived to the shores of Quintana Roo in 1519 with 11 ships, 553 men, and 110 seamen, along with a few blacks and indigenous people from Cuba. Interesting that he says this because I read in another, another literature that the people who brought the chicken pox were not the Spanish. It was the blacks and the indigenous people that came from Cuba. Now, I don't know how true that is. I'll leave that up to you. Also, Cortes arrived to an island called Isla de Mujeres, where he finds out that two Spaniards lived and sent out to rescue them. So now he's gonna go in, we're going to go into the subject of Gonzalo Guerrero, one of my favorite Spaniards when it comes to our history. So, so, if you can tell, guys, there's quite a bit, so just bear with me. Eight years later, both Spaniards knew the Mayan language to its perfection. So now it's talking about the two Spaniards that were captured by the Mayans. While Gonzalo Guerrero assimilated 100% into the Mayan culture, his friend Jerónimo de Aguilar did not. So Gonzalo accepted everything Mayan. He became everything about the Mayans, learned the philosophy, the, the language, everything. And his buddy didn't. Gonzalo Guerrero is viewed as a traitor in the Hispanic community. Hispanic, once again, as Spaniard, not Mexican. Gonzalo Guerrero uh, bought his freedom and joined the Mayan military. He also married a Mayan woman under her customs and religion and had three sons, which are the first Mexicans, mestizos. There you guys have it. This is where I get that the word Mexican was initially created for the first, for the mestizos, right here, okay? Now, I was wrong. I thought he had, I read that he had two sons, but apparently he has three. I mean, that's just from the literature that I've read, but apparently here he has three sons. Gonzalo taught the Mayans how to fight against the Spanish and died fighting against the Spanish invasion. Gonzalo Guerrero is the symbol of the foreigners who not only came to Anahuac and accepted the culture, but fought and died to defend it. When help arrives for Jerónimo and Gonzalo, Jerónimo right away leaves with the Spanish while Gonzalo stays back, gives thanks to Cortez, and argues that he, that he already has a family and that he will stay and live with the Mayans. So yes, Gonzalo started his family, 
with his Mayan wife. And he when they finally, the Spaniards arrive, he's like, you know what? I'm going to stay here with my family. Thank you for coming. Peace out. When Cortes arrives at Tabasco, he is offered Malinche, who knew how to speak Nahuatl and Maya, in which she becomes an interpreter. Malinche, in the Mayan tongue, lets Jerónimo de Aguilar and he in Spanish to Cortes about the situation that is being lived in the Aztec Empire. So here, I didn't know this. So apparently when Cortes arrived, Malincha was offered to him. But then Jerónimo, the guy that the, the buddy that was with Gonzalo, once he joined the, the Spaniards again, he learned Mayan. So he, he was able to interpret to Malinche. No, Malinche to Jerónimo and Jerónimo to Cortes about the prophecy of Quetzalcoatl. So they all worked. All these three worked as one. In the year 1519, in which the prophecy that every 52 years, the return of Quetzalcoatl is awaited. Is awaited, yes. Okay, so in the year 1519, in which the prophecy... Okay, so every 52 years, the prophecy will fulfill itself again. And that's what the... That's what uh, Malinche told Jerónimo and Jerónimo told Cortés in Spanish. This character was prophesied to come from the East. It's of light skin with a beard who would bring the, the new era of Quetzalcoatl and it would punish all who went against his philosophy and religion. Something to keep in mind. So now we go into a... Uh, a different subject is called the prophecy is fulfilled. The effect Moctezuma II and the consul were aware of the expeditions of the Spanish in Anahuac. Oh, in effect, Moctezuma II and the consul were aware of the expeditions of the Spanish. And so Moctezuma and the Aztecs, they were aware of what the Spanish were doing. The downfall of the Mexica had been known through prophecy where Hitzelopochtli would be taken out by Quetzalcoatl. So they were expecting this already. In a prophecy, a comet of fire flew across Tenochtitlan, in which one day the people of Hitzelopochtli caught on fire into total destruction. So here, when I read this, it's almost like he's uh, there's a vision being told here. Another day, in broad daylight, the water from the large bird... Uh, from the lake burned without explanation. So yes, I took this more like as a he's having a vision. Uh, I would say that it was um Tlacaelel or Moctezuma was having a vision of the destruction of Tenochtitlan. In some rare cases, the cries of woman crying for her children were heard, La Llorona. So this to me is where the concept of La Llorona comes from. And this where a woman is crying for her children were heard. That's and, and, and it makes sense because I've looked. Where does the concept of La Llorona come from? From the Aztecs. From this vision that Moctezuma had. Moctezuma saw a vision where he saw the arrival of the Spanish. And men coming to him from battle. And soon would, would disappear. So yes. This right here. What I just told you was a vision that Moctezuma saw prior to the arrival of the Spanish. The Conquista de Mexico was more of a civil war between indigenous people due to the deep-rooted wounds done by the Mexica. And now Cortes knew how to take advantage of the weaknesses of the indigenous structure, which was focused in the, in the current time, more of the, the materialistic over that of the spiritual and philosophical. The Hispanic myth that, that claims that thanks to the, the valor and superiority of the weapons, horses, and religion, it gave Cortes the victory, is the product of the ignorance and colonization, colonization mentality in which we live in the past 500 years. So yes, thinking that Cortes, because of his superiority, his weapons, his horses, religion, that gave him the power to conquer is false. The disappearance of the Tolteca, along with the new philosophy that was put in place by Tlacaelel, in which the Mexica gained power, Moctezuma, Xocoyotzin, paid for, paid for it all. So moving on. 
the tribes that did not turn away from the Quetzalcoatl, Tlaloc philosophy, were the Mayans, Zapotecos, Mixtecos, Purempechas, Tlapanecas, and the Tlaxcaltecas. So these are the tribes that didn't buy into it and are the tribes that are still in resistance to this day. For starters, they did not accept Cortez as Quetzalcoatl and remain in rebellion, first with the Mexica and then with the Spanish. These tribes represent the, spirit, the spiritual reserve of the Mexico and Nahuac. And I absolutely agree with that. These tribes is to this day what Mexico truly is, indigenous. And I completely agree with that. Cortez knew how to use the issues regarding religion and rivalries among the tribes in which he self-proclaimed to be Quetzalcoatl, in which through this he was able to arrive to Tenochtitlan with dozens of indigenous allies and start the killings. To the Mexica, the conflict was a spiritual one, while for the Spanish it represented a, a conquista in which they would acquire wealth and political power. The delivery of the Mexica is to the Spanish. Okay, so here we're going to a different, a different subject. The delivery of the Mexica to the Spanish. Finally, and against the will of the Mexica priests, the Council of Elders ordered Moctezuma to receive in Tenochtitlan and Nan Cortes, the self-proclaimed captain of Quetzalcoatl. Moctezuma calls to the entire Council of Elders and says that finally he who they had been waiting for was finally here. So they fully accepted Nan Cortes as Quetzalcoatl. With that, Moctezuma also said that he would obey and pay tribute to the king of Spain as everyone had done to him. So Moctezuma ordered that the same way that his people paid tribute to him, to pay tribute to Hernán Cortés as a self-proclaimed uh, Quetzalcoatl. Understand that this powerful Aztec empire, knowing of the transgressions that their ancestors had caused at the order of Tlacaelel, accepted and submitted their philosophy and religion to that of Quetzalcoatl. So that which they had removed, the spiritual, and replaced it with Huitzilopochtli, they now submitted to. Quetzalcoatl, which represents the spirit. A little after this, Cortes kidnaps Moctezuma, who had allowed Cortes to stay in his home, and tortured him in order to obtain the gold. So yes, in another literature, it talks about how Enan Cortes takes Moctezuma a prisoner in his house until he tells him where the gold is. So now we're going to a different uh, topic. The mystery of the sad night. The name of the sad night was written by the Spanish as it was a sad night for them, but not for the Mexica. Absolutely. You know, we understand this as La Noche Triste, but it was only Noche Triste or sad night for the Spaniards, not for the Mexica. It is surprising to see this day and age how the dominating culture Spanish keep in their books the concept of the battle of the of the sad night, as it shows that the Mexican state is still ran by Hispanics. Hispanics are Spaniards, not Mexicans, and still viewed as a colony. So yes, I can definitely agree with that. The real story is that. Itzlixochitl was removed from the Council of Elders of Texcoco in 1516 by Moctezuma. So now we're going to go into a character that I didn't know about, but who played a 99% part in what happened in Tenochtitlan. It wasn't Cortez. It was Itzlixochitl. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, please forgive me. Cortez used Itzlixochitl during all of the right, during all of the armed conflict, and uh, all of the armed conflict, and Cortez and the Hispanic historians have denied the glory in order to give that to Cortez and his men. So yes, Cortez is given the glory of having assembled and 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 gathered all these indigenous people to attack Tenochtitlan. When in all reality, it wasn't Cortez that did all this. It was Ishli Shochitl, 
who gathered all these indigenous people for Cortes to do what they had to do. And the reason why he did that is because he was taken out of the Council of Elders. He felt some type of way. In effect, the true key to the takedown of the, of the Mexica was Isli Xochitl and not Cortes. For the simple reason that in 1520, Cortes did not have the capabilities to command almost half a million indigenous that faced the Mexica, along with the fact that he was unable to communicate and not with them, and did not know the war stra tra strategies of the of, of the Anahuacs. So this makes perfect sense. Isli Xochitl was behind gathering all the indigenous people to unite with Cortes to attack the Mexica. Why did he do that? Because he was obviously upset that they removed him from the Council of Elders. He felt some type of way. Isli Xochitl was the one to command the hundreds of thousands of warriors, the one who ordered to cut the water supply to Tenochtitlan. The most powerful weapon of the colonizers was the chicken pox. Never in Anahuac was it heard of such a catastrophe that this pandemic had. Very little is said about Isli Xochitl of the of the chicken pox. Uh, uh, okay, very little is said about Isli Xochitl and of the chicken pox, as this is done in order to present the Spanish as the heroes. So now from this we can conclude that this was an indigenous war started by Nan Cortes but put together and finished <clears throat> by Isli Xochitl and the thousands of indigenous people. The, now we go on to a different subject, the fall of the eagle. Uh, the fall of the eagle and the, resist the resistance war. The city of Mexico, Tenochtitlan, fell after resisting for 80, 80 days. The city of Tenochtitlan was taken in August 13, 1521 by a handful of Spaniards and indigenous people. The atrocities that were committed by the Spanish and the indigenous people have not been documented. Cortes gave the order to destroy, uh, destroy rock by rock the city of Tenochtitlan, the biggest city in that era in which from its own material built the new Spain. So the new Spain was built with the material of Mexico Tenochtitlan, Signi signifying with this the destruction and the negation of the of the beaten civilization that was Im immediately prosecuted up until our days. The Anahuac civilization was set out to be destroyed. So yes, we can we can definitely see that. You know uh, even in this in this generation, you know, being proud of being Mexican, being proud of your indigenous roots, it's not really something that people look at and 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 admire it's kind of looked down on and, and when a lot of mexicans who don't understand their history who don't know who they are they see that they kind of want to like not have anything to do with it but with this channel we're going to change that we're going to be proud of our indigenous which we're going to be proud of our history we're going to know exactly where we come from where we are at and where we're going that's what this channel is all about the conquest the conquest of mexico did not end in the 13th of August of 1521, with the fall of Tenochtitlan, the invaded tribes will keep up a permanent resistance. And to this day, there is such thing as resistencia indígena. To this day, that does exist. Indigenous resistance. And I believe that it's up to the mestizos, the prophecy that Cuauhtemo gave of the, uh, you know, the, jeep, the sleeping giant would wake up I feel like it's up to the mestizos to do that work that Cuauhtémoc, the last Tlotlani of Mexico Tenochtitlan, prophesied. It's up to us. I believe so. Crimes against humanity. So now it goes to a different topic. The stability, the harmony in which this society had lived for about 3,000 years were destroyed uh, violently. From living like a human being, uh, sovereign and free, from being the beneficiaries of one of the oldest civilizations, the indigenous passed on to rapidly become less than animals. Their new condition was of being defeated and slaves. Their religion, culture, and tongue were seeked out to be destroyed. 
And now the, the whole tongue and culture, you know, every time we, it goes back to it, every time we talk about the, the Aztecs, anything regarding our cultura is demonic. Spanish was forced on our people. They used to whip students in schools if you spoke if you spoke Nahuatl. So it was beating out of us. And now it is our job to go back to that and reclaim that and learn whatever you can. Have some form of, 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 of identity with the indigenous. Learn a few words. You know, I have this booklet here that has a lot of the words that, that I'm learning currently right now. I uh, Let me see if I can show you. Um, I learned this and um, I go over them every day until they become second nature. So that's the way of me going back to that. The Mexicans over a current time, due to the colonization mentality and cultural, culturally can't picture the tragedy that our ancestors lived. Due to the colonized education, most Mexicans don't care. The educational system, the media and artists and investigators in some way promote colonization. The colonizers destroy the culture along with the identity through the elimination of historical uh, memory, removal of the tongues, removal of the religions, along with the murder and destruction of the temples. Never in human history of humanity has a civilization been stripped of their human rights along with their culture, oppressed and exploit the defeated civilization. The lack of knowledge regarding our indigenous past, the shame of our indigenous past, the shame to our culture, but the praise for someone else's, foreigners in their own country could only be explained through the neglect of our past. The neglect of our ignorance of our past is the neglect of ourselves. We, we are what we can remember. The truth is hidden and it is dressed as a romantic setting where the cultures meet. To the ones who control the money, the criollos do not like for our people to be remembered of the past. This is one of the reasons why majority of the Mexicans are ignorant to the culture and history. So yes, guys, this is it. I hope that you guys learned something. Um, next one is the chapter 16. It's going to be the colonia, the colony. So I hope that you guys learned something. It was a long one, but it was a very informative one. Um, there's a lot of information to soak up. Feel free to watch it in increments. Stop, you know, digest. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. With that, guys, take care and God bless.